There we're live. It's Tuesday night. I'm Wild Joe. This is Dive Bar Comedy. We have another great lineup for you, as always. <laughs> and, um, mm -hmm. and yeah, I, we have Carol doing the tech. She yeah, has Carol. All these shows Woo! On the Woo! Yeah. And, uh, we'll get into that. So, first, let's get into our theme song by the late and great GT about wanting to get out there and do some comedy in the dive bars. We're going All right. to uh, yellow tier in one week, which means bars are opening back mm. up. Indoors, right. outdoors, get your drink on. Mm. Let's do this. Let's close that. All right. Sorry. I don't want it to block the picture. So here All we right. go. That happened last time. You know, you know. That's the way we like it. Mm. All right, so let's go around and talk to our comics and uh, see how everybody's doing. First, uh, I want to get in with Carol and find out your about your new shows. And I'm very sad, actually, about your Griffith Park show disappearing. And that's right by my house. I only made it out once because the kids are crazy and they were just <laughs> running laps around the fountain. But, um, yeah, so, well, what, what, what was up with that place? Did you have to ask anybody permission to use that place or you just started doing it? Yep, just showed up one day and kept coming back every week and doing it. And uh, um, nobody ever gave you any problems or told you to go away? No. Nope. Well, why drop that one? Of all the shows to drop, why, why would you drop that show? Well, um, I did have a complaint one time from one of the apartments, but, you know, we told them to piss off. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. No, because uh, all all the people in Los Angeles they want to do stuff at places at, indoors or yeah. at least on a patio at a club. So we're trying to move all the outdoor stuff in or to places. So we're yeah. moving the Griffith Park to the NoHo Diner. We'll be doing it inside the NoHo Diner on Thursdays at seven p.m. So yeah, awesome. And well, that was uh, a beautiful spot, but not so much a comedy spot. It's like more of a hangout and chill by the fountain kind of place but but it was a good idea for it when was. everything was shut down yeah it, it worked for a long time and I mean it would still work now especially now that it's getting warmer and it's staying lighter longer but like I said the the comedians I think they want to be at a place they want to you know have a restroom or <laughs> be able to order drinks or you know food stuff like that so yeah we're trying yeah. to move all the outside stuff in Except for Pan Pacific, I'm going to keep that as long as I can until they basically, you know, start um, letting people reserve it, I guess. But they haven't done that yet. So you just started well, doing shows there without permission, just like guerrilla style. Yep. All right. Well, <laughs> hey, good yeah. idea. Nobody, nobody gives you a problem. So, well, I've been usurped a few times. I've showed up and there's somebody already there. So I've had to moved to the alt spot that's uh, up next to the museum but so far so good um 
I did want to announce on Sundays, I am hosting at the Chateau at 1.30 p.m. At the, for their open mic. Also, I'm hosting at the Ha Ha Cafe across the street at 4 o'clock. So double duty right. on my Sundays. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you're a busy lady. Very, yep. very busy. And I checked out your uh, online show that you do live streaming, uh, The World's Best Laugh. Right? I saw you. I, that. I was Thank on you. there yesterday, and then I had to go do story time. But I checked out the beginning. And, uh, and that's great. So you're on Mondays online. Yeah, now, I moved the world's Sunday. best laugh to Monday because, yeah, I got three shows on Sundays. <laughs> I got two open mics and a secret show. Ooh. Mm -hmm. yeah. We like that. All right. Well, uh, let's get around and meet our comics. I think everybody's a returning guest here. We got some of our family favorites. Let's uh, just, I'm going left to right. Ben Rosen, welcome Hello. back. You were engaged. Did you get married or, or almost Not yet. married? Uh, okay. Happening in July, unless, you know, things change. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully not. Yeah, that's only been rescheduled three times. So, you know, what's Oh, new? boy. Wow. So, you want to tell us any uh, details about your wedding plans, or is that all in your comedy set? uh no i'll tell you all the unfunny details now and then i'll leave the funny stuff to the set so when you hear this and you're like oh this person doesn't have a lot to say that's humorous it's because i'm harvesting it all for jokes people okay can't give away the good <laughs> in the interview everyone's like oh why would i listen so stuff about the wedding so uh our my dog is the flower girl um, is it a female dog it is a female dog Okay. Uh, you can look under the hood if you need to, you know, to, to verify, but you know she's definitely female. No, no trans dog for me. Not there's anything wrong. With that. Um. So yeah, so she's walking down the aisle, and then the the venue where we're getting married is requiring all the guests to get wristbands to show that they are vaccinated from COVID. Oh so, wow. It's going to be like Fire Festival presents Ben and Dahlia's wedding. Wow. So you don't have very many anti-vaxxers in your friend group, I guess. Actually, the only anti-vaxxer who will be at our wedding is our dog walker who's taking care of the dog after she walks down the aisle. <laughs> okay. okay. What's she going to yeah. do? With no wristband or is she going to go for it and just get the... COVID vaccine just for you? No, she's going she, to get, the, uh, she's gonna get COVID tested three days before. So that way it's I see. fine. Because like legally, you can't force someone to get vaccinated if you're a business. Um, I see. Which if you ask me, seems like an oversight by the founding fathers, but you know. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's still not really FDA approved and the... Uh, you know, I don't think that's the fun of it. You could get, get a it. blood clot. You could get a urine clot. Anything could clot. You don't know. <laughs> I didn't know about the urine clots, but uh, that's a new you one. You heard it here first. This is hmm. a. This is not just a comedy show. This is a news. A news show. News you can use. All right, Ben. What's been going on with you and doing comedy? You've been out there doing shows, or just keeping it in the virtual world, or what's going on? Oh, I've been in the virtual world. I haven't been to a real show since the pandemic started. Wow. So are you vaccinated then? Uh, I'm half vaccinated. I get my second okay. one on Friday. You're a half vaxxer. Yeah. All right. I've always wanted to be biracial and this is the closest I'm going to get. <laughs> <laughs> Carol's a lot closer on that. She's taking it one drop at a time. She's like 10, Getting injections. black now. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have a name for, you know? Uh, if you haven't heard Carol talking uh, about her uh, shenanigans fun, fun sex life lately, uh, <laughs> missing out. Mm. Anyway, and Carol, I love all your penis jokes, by the way. I, I just love uh, penis puns. <laughs> I'm a big fan of penis puns. Anyway. Yep. Mm. All right. Well, welcome to the show, Ben. Let's see who's next. Caroline Langford. Hello. Hello. I'm She's still good. good. And uh, thank you. Caroline sent me. She has a hidden talent, which nobody would have guessed. She sent me some beautiful handmade dolls that were, I don't know if they were knitted or crocheted. I guess knitted, right? Knitted, yes. That, I've knitted a hat. I've knitted actually three hats before. Takes a long time, especially when you use the skinny strings. I, I knitted a hat for GT when we were first, like our first Christmas or second Christmas. 
and I, I just got bored or I don't know. I just didn't go long enough. I thought this long enough. And then we washed it and he ended up with a yarmulke. So, uh, Been there. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> knitting is hard and very time consuming. And, and I really appreciate that. It was, must have taken a long time to make. No, it didn't. And the fact is when you're stuck at home all these months, a year and two months and counting, Oof. you know, I've got to find something to do. Otherwise I'll go insane. So I started making these toys and then I thought of your little ones. They will like it, I hope, anyway. They do, and, and they're beautiful and they're big. Like you sent me pictures before and I pictured like a little toy and then they came. It's like a big doll. So yeah. I mean, they're, I didn't know what I was doing when I did it. I was just following. Oh, so pictures. you're not like a, like an expert pro at this. This is a beginner skill. <laughs> It is, and I've had fun with it, you know, when I'm watching TV rather than just sit there. Also, I smoke less. Okay, because your hands are busy. Exactly. Though I have to stop and have a smoke, but I will <laughs> smoke less. <laughs> That's like me and my, my wig making. I have um, some boring documentary type shows that I put on while I do it, so I don't have to really look that much at the screen. Um, I was, I can't believe... They made like, I think it's even more than one season about how much Scientology sucks. Uh, Leah, I forgot. Yeah, name. Leah Remney. Remney. Leah Remney. She just goes on and on one episode after the next. And it's like, oh, they lock them up in a basement. Oh, they steal all your money. Oh, they follow you. I mean, it's like horrible, but it's like, God, how much can they go on about this? I mean, it, I don't. Anyway, it's, it's a great thing uh, to just have in the background because you know, you kind of get the point after five, 10 minutes and then she just hammers it in for like, I don't know how many hours it goes on. So I've, I've got that one. And then I've got this Greek mythology one where it's just like slide shows of statues and stuff. And they, they talk about, you know, all these Greek myths. And that's again, one that you don't have to pay too close. Attention. My husband yeah. used to love to watch ice road truckers. And I swear every single episode was just Somebody might fall off the ice. Somebody might slide off the ice. Somebody, it's like, and nobody ever did. <laughs> it was so frustrating. I hated that show. Um, well, we well, well, yeah, and my little one, he's two. He watches uh, YouTube videos of just like garbage trucks going around doing their rounds from house to house, just picking up <laughs> garbage cans. Fascinating. I mean, yeah, you can find all this on YouTube and, and he's just totally enraptured. Quiet. My yeah. husband won't go to sleep at night unless we watch forensic files. And I always think that's creepy. Oh. Yeah, I'm going, what are you watching it to see things not to do, you know, how to do the murder without, you know, get you so you can without getting caught. <laughs> yes. Or just right you know, before I mean, bed. Uh, you're gonna have bad dreams or bad thoughts. I was watching one of these like Viking kind of movies and I started dreaming about beheadings and stuff because it was really gory it was it was a cool show but it was too gory it was creeping I'm, into my I'm, I'm so used to it now it's like you know okay yeah another murder i'm asleep yeah yes <laughs> yeah i was just talking about that they give us so much detail that they say 40 percent of murders go unsolved but they give us so much detail that if somebody wanted to pull off a, a crime and get away with it like you just have to study a little bit and it seems very That's easy it. Exactly. And we, you know, it's like you've got, if you, I think it's ID channel where they just have one show after another. I, I didn't realize how many people have been murdered, but it seems like zillions because they've got all these shows. Yeah. And, and people that are interested in becoming a murderer probably watch those shows. So <laughs> I, I mean, they, they call everywhere. it making a murderer. Yes. <laughs> they're, they're, they make it too easy. And then they glamorize, they, they glamorize the murderer and put their name and face out there. And you, it's just, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, but I always feel, I always think about the actors that portray them. Because oh. don't we now, we look at that face and think, he did it. Well, I mean, we know that it says it's reenacted. But still, some people might see that person and go, oh, my God. You know, they meet them in the street. That's the murderer. Oh, my God. So or I even am just having that I... kind of face that well, you fill that role, you know, it kind of. But well, you, you did feel bad about your, yourself. Hang on. Kind of free party, you know? Uh, no, I was just saying I am that person that hates because I had a training video at my job, which was about sexual harassment. And this it's this guy named fucking Steve. And he's the biggest piece of shit guy that's ever came across any woman in this life. And he was such a dick. 
in this training video, I ever see that <laughs> fucking cunt walking down the street, I'm a whoop Steve's motherfucking ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see the shark, aka Mr. C. Oh, he's a prick, yo. The guys do not be like Steve. Don't be a Steve. <laughs> All right, Caroline, what else is going on? Have you left your house yet or you're still no, waiting? I haven't left my, it's 14 months and uh, I mean, I'm counting up. I turn into a recluse. Yeah. I, I now have, but I have tons of friends all on Zoom, never met them in real life. Huh. Um, when, are, when are you going to get out of your house again? You have any plans? I haven't got any plans at the moment. <laughs> you're like, I like it now. I like it. At you home. know, I'm so used to it. I don't even think about going out. You know, it's like no longer. It's scary that I'm like that. And my husband, I think he's enjoying the pandemic, that he doesn't want it to end because he doesn't want to go out. He never liked it before. He's got. I mean, it's comfortable now. at home. You know, but now it's springtime. It's going to be summer. People want to get out there and enjoy the weather. Well, we've got a very big garden, you see, so we're out there all day long anyway. So it doesn't right. feel like, I don't feel like trapped feeling. But on the other hand, it's not not, not really n normal and natural behavior, what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, but when you do I need get out there. I need, I, I need to get my hair done, and I haven't. I, I like it. You know what I learned? This is horrible. I was, I was reading the news, and this thing came on. Side parts are out and I'm like how can a side part be out and I started researching it and this is a wig that I've been working on so as you can see I'm not Beautiful. done I haven't done the back yet but now it's all middle parts I guess I'm like how could the side part go out of style I mean it's always been in style but anyway I guess it's out so of, uh, Gen Z and TikTok they said yeah they said Gen Z you read the same article they said Gen Z and TikTok are like and, and then you look at all the celebrities and you realize one by one, they all have the middle part. Oh, I would look awful. I was always a side part person for, I don't know. They said no, it was just, no, no. I, I can't remember ever having a middle part. But anyway, shocker. Oh, I think by the way, do you have to part. something if someone has out. a middle part? Like, does it affect their personality? Or like, oh, that's a side part kind of girl. Like, is that a thing? <laughs> I guess <laughs> now you're going to look like a, like a dork. They also said skinny jeans are out, which... Fine, you know, but I mean, God, it's what hard to keep up with all this that? stuff. By the time you buy one thing, and I mean, I don't know, I don't know what's in, what's out, but they'll be back. Yeah, don't that's worry. Right. <laughs> they'll come back. You I'll tell you what's in COVID. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, loungewear is in because people are staying home in their pajamas. Exactly. I've never owned this pants. many sweatpants. Yeah, nice tops and uh, sweatpants because they're doing a Zoom from the waist up. It's not even for look. It's from the. It's from the yeah, shoulders up. You can wear a crop top. Nobody would know. Wear, you could be stuck naked, and no one would know. Done it. Yeah, unless you have a glass <laughs> table. Yeah, because because every Monday my job at ten thirty a.m. they have like a, a quick like pow wow how was your weekend meeting. And, and sometimes I'm coming fucked up from the night before. Or I'm like waking up half naked, drunk, and I roll over and rush. And I just like throw over a shirt. And it's just like dick swinging. And I was like, yeah, no, I had a great weekend. How you guys doing? Let's work. <laughs> wow. And uh, it doesn't this, work out so good if you have a glass table, though. <laughs> yeah. I get my angry, if the camera falls, I'm going to lose my job instantly. Yeah. Or gain, or gain. <laughs> They might like what they see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Might get okay. a promotion. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Might not be the kind of promotion I want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. C, by the way, we went to a real life party. They're partying like it's 1999. Like COVID never yeah. existed. No masks, nowhere. Uh, I was having like deja vu blast from the past kind of feelings like... Uh, I was on the Sunset Strip, yeah, circa 2000 is how I felt. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, and, no. Yeah, it was, you know, was good. It was I, an I awesome party. Was like, I'm, I'm not scared anymore. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're vaccinated and everything. You, you've had it. So, but um, it's at this company called Weed Sellers. It's actually a liquor brand. It has a bunch of liquors. 
it's ran by these uh, Armenian and Persian guys, and they got a real cool company. And um, it was a great party. A couple of famous actresses came through, like Alexis Knapp. This actress she named came through. So it was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I didn't spot anybody, but the, they had a cool band. And then uh, I was thinking, oh, we should do some shows and book some comics. And then I met some of the partners, and they're like, oh, yeah, you're a comedian? Come back. We're having Bill Burr perform here, and we're having this person. And I mean, they already got their big, famous comics coming in. I was like, wow. They're well connected, but it was a lot of fun. So, oh God, I hear babies coming. Babies are infringing. All right. All right. Let's He's see surfing. what else we got on the show. Shaggy. Shaggy Durai, are you still out there in India? Oh, yeah, in South India, guys. Oi. What time is it there? Is it morning, night? I mean, about what time is it? 9.50 a.m. A.m. Oh, bright and early. Nice. So uh, what's going on in India? I heard you guys are having a, a second wave, and it's really hitting right now, oh, COVID. Tragedy. You know, I'm trying to find some comedy and tragedy, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> an artist, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so, you guys, so uh, per capita, it's not as bad as the U.S.'s uh, big wave, but I guess in actual numbers, because India has a billion people, that it's the yeah. worst of anywhere in the world. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we make a lot of babies. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> but there's only one Shaggy. There's nobody like you. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, but, uh, because in the future, it's all about technology and uh, neuroscience. So you, you can duplicate stuff. You never know. It, all it takes is a drill in a brain, a drill in a skull. That's all it takes. So I got a question. Is this the excuse that you use in court when they're asking you to pay child support? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, my gosh. Then. So... So what's going on? What's happening in India? Are things open? Are they closed? Is everybody sheltering at home? Are people just going around being super spreaders? What's going on on the streets out there? Oh, well, uh, we are in, uh, in the second phase now. Uh, everything is getting locked down. Uh, uh, we only have internet. That's all we have. That's our only outlet. And uh, yeah, we, you know, we get food, uh, thankfully. Yeah, uh, but uh, we are we are in short of cylinders. We are in short of oxygen. You know what yeah. comes around, guys. You know we are polluting a lot, and it's coming back now. Yeah, because before, are there like let's say programs. It again. I was asking, are there any like government programs where they like give you guys food or money or anything? We don't have any such stimulus. Uh, uh, you know, we are not a rich country like that, but whatever. Yeah, what was we, going we got, on like a month ago before all this happened? Like a month ago, were people going to restaurants and gathering and walking around with no mask or, or what happened? Yeah, uh, we, 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 it was a little liberal. And, and then now it, it's striking back uh, the second wave, whatever. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's coming back again. So uh, uh, it, we, we are going through some re social restrictions now. Yeah. How are the masks get... going over? Was everybody wearing their mask in India? I'll say it again. Was everybody wearing their mask in India or not really? Not really, yeah. Especially in Tamil Nadu, the state that I am in, nobody is wearing masks. Uh, 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 yeah, and, and it's hard, it's really hard to imply that rule, you know? Yeah, uh, uh, the, the cops are really sick and tired of following that and uh, maintaining that. Uh, uh, whatever yeah yeah i think it comes down to social pressure like in los angeles if you just walk outside even if it's a residential street with almost no people if you pass one person they'll give you a dirty look if you don't have a mask on i, I think just hey stay 10 feet away from me but uh no when you see somebody coming you got to put your mask on and then take it off when they when they leave i don't know it, they're very it's not just the rules, it's the people that are following are very strict in LA anyways. So, yeah. but our numbers have dwindled. We're, that's why we're almost going to open the bars again because we've gotten down yeah. to a really low percentage of positive yeah. cases. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, 
Well, we're all praying for your country. I'm glad you could join us and have a little fun on the internet. What a fun funny. Yeah, you're <laughs> great fun. We never, we never had anybody from uh, so far away as India on this show. Most of us are in Los Angeles, but it, it's oh, awesome right. that you're here. Yeah. All right. Let's see who we got next. Kenny Lyon. He, uh, he looks naked. Kenny Lyon's muted. He's yeah. been on a lot of uh, stages and gotten kicked out of a lot of venues for going naked on stage. But uh, now that he's on Zoom, I guess it's a little easier. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't move the camera, Kenny, and you'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, there might I, be I just... children watching this show. <laughs> yeah, we got to keep it clean out here. Oh God, I hear my kids yelling, "Mommy is the worst." <laughs> so, it's what have you been doing, Kenny? You you've been out in real life a little bit. I saw you out a couple times at Lexington and around town. How's it going? What are you working on? Yeah, Lexus seems to be uh, doing stuff, so I'm just showing up as much as possible and yeah, that uh, place is fun they, that place is a lot of fun and they have outdoor shows they were doing indoor shows as well i don't know if that was legal but they were doing it and uh they don't have outside yeah. anymore they no more outside no. now it's all inside okay well mm -hmm. yeah they had their bar open they never shut down their bar they just kept it going so i guess they skirted the law somehow. Maybe they're paying off the cops or who knows what. But anyway, but it's a lot of fun. What else, Kenny? You, you muted again. You got background noise there. Hey, uh, I, uh, I was uh, getting banned from these new open mics because uh, I got too excited and started getting naked and stuff. And <laughs> it was just for playing around. And they took it as like uh uh, uh, me trying to shut down their place, but you know, ain't nobody trying to shut down open mics right now just for some naked guys. It's just they're getting a little sensitive, you know. So, what is it? Are you a nudist, or what is it about getting naked on stage? Then, even though it gets you into trouble, why do you just keep doing it year, year after year? It's because, like, you know, you go to these open mics and you know how they get. They get wild and people start trying to act wild and stuff. And I, I just, your name is Wild Joe. I mean, you know, yeah. it's, it gets wild. So <laughs> it, sometimes I try to, um, you know, level up the wild and they get too scared. And I'm not hurting anyone. I just want to get things going to the next level. And people just Maybe don't understand. Song. You get like a thong or a fig leaf or something like that. So, uh, you know, you don't get banned. Yeah, I need to I need to start investing in the wardrobe more than just that. You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> My uncle used to go to nude uh, like resorts and and he and his wife are not good looking and they're like 60 years old, 60 something. They said they were the best looking people there, which tells you <laughs> it must have been an ugly crowd. But he used to go to these <laughs> nudist resorts and pop Viagra. It's supposed to be all about being a naturalist and being back to nature and just at peace with your body. But he would pop a Viagra and like walk around, I guess, trying to show off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that sounds like your kind of style, Kenny. Yeah, that sounds like my future. Shoot. <laughs> Uh well uh, have you been banned from any place lately yeah i just got this place called uh, accidental chaos uh over on santa monica and la brea but i'm just realizing that i'm i'm trying to put in more time on my podcast so if you guys can listen to my podcast it's uh on spotify uh band girl b-a-n-n-e-d-g-u-r-l girl spelled with g-u-r-l uh just trying to uh rack up 10 bucks on it if i get a thousand listens i get 10 bucks okay but wait a second are you the girl now are you going trans too kenny come on man. no i just like people were calling me a sissy for complaining about open mics so i just went ahead and just played into the whole what they're trying to label me as and uh i was just continuing to get banned and people were calling me a little girl so the 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 name just popped in my head and i'm like i'm gonna i'm gonna name it this all right all right uh, who, you put people on your show or is it just you talking 
it's me on my on my uh, welfare phone. I recorded on my EBT phone, which uh, it has really good sound. Honestly, the audio is not that bad. And I do have a few people on it, but mostly it's just me, me talking for a whole hour about shit that goes down at the open mics and other shit. Yeah. Oh, you, do you still do your uh, worst comedians list? I definitely need to come up with a brand new one because there are so many new people at these COVID mics. It's like, uh, I, and I know their names because yeah. I just, I have a good memory. And honestly, it's so easy for me to label them as hacks or networkers. Or Maybe you could do like a donkey of the day on your show where it's like a comedian I hate of the day or like <laughs> shitty comedian of the day. And that's like, yeah, that's not fucked hard. You know, and you just go in for like five minutes to like the ether beat with Nas in the background or something. <laughs> oh. Good yes. Thing. That sounds dope, man. Hell yeah, well, Mr. C. Fun. You're, you're, you're branding yourself as being the band guy or the band girl now, which is uh, what we started off talking about. Everybody knows you as the guy that gets banned everywhere you go. So that's good. You got your brand, <laughs> the band brand. All right, <laughs> well, welcome to the show. I'm not going to ban you. Hopefully, Thank you, Wild Joe. We love having you on. And you've been out there a soldier in the streets for many years. So, of course, you know all the comics and you know all the mics and everything going on. So... All right, let's see who's up next. Daryl Kamak, muted. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, there you like go. Welcome on the show. How are you doing? Good, good. Yeah, I got my little killer dog that's running around here, so I have to mute the, the mic every now and then. Yeah. yeah he's a killer. He's, he's, a little, he's a little Yorkie. And he's strong. <laughs> and he likes vicious. to bark. He's vicious, no. Let me, if I throw him on your ass, you'll see. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. I tell people, yeah, you think he's, we think he's not tough. Let me throw him on your ass, and you'll find out <laughs> real quick. Uh, sharp little teeth. Probably has little sharp teeth. <laughs> man, Kitty, I, I do. I'm just listening to this stuff, and I'm thinking, man, I must. I'm really old, man. <laughs> I am really old. I never thought to, you know, you know, get the party started. Things are kind of slow. Let me take my dick out. You know. What I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta hand it to you, Kenny. You are taking shit to a whole nother level. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know what? This is kind of boring. <laughs> this place is kind of vanilla. <laughs> you know, let me, add, let me add a little color, a little spice to it. <laughs> take, take and they out. say you're not supposed to use props in stand up. So that's why. <laughs> that ain't no prop, that's a weapon. <laughs> There's no prop. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, my goodness, man. That shit is so funny to me. I'm like, really? <laughs> now, I'm not saying I want to be there for that, but just the thought of it. That shit is funny. That shit is funny. Hey, man, this guy you ever seen at the mic, this guy's killing it. At the end of the set, he takes his dick out. <laughs> that makes a memorable set. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, I'm done with that. Well, What's and up? he gets banned. He gets banned everywhere for it. So huh? there's consequences too. You know? yeah, well, I'm not just so. You know. And it's been going on for years. I don't know how he still finds places to perform. You know, <laughs> no place even open. Find He's shutting open, rooms down. Banned. He's shutting rooms down all over the city. Shutting <laughs> rooms down. <laughs> oh God, that shit is funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, uh, hey, hey, Shark, man, you you had me going earlier, man. You remind me of when I was on the sitting on the train, man. You, your 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 crotch was in my face up against the <laughs> up against the can. Up against, oh my God, I'm on the train again. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, the train's like, oh, come on, man, you got to stand facing me while I sit. <laughs> you don't know what's better, facing you or facing away from you. Either way. <laughs> You forced to try to hold hold your breath the entire trip. God. <laughs> Passing out, hyperventilating. Hold your oh God. Oh man. That brings back memories. <laughs> but anyway, hey y'all, what's happening? Yeah, my name's Daryl K Mac. Joe K Mac. K Mac. I know I say it wrong every time. Sorry. Yeah, I know. It's all good. It's all so, I know. Uh, 
been out there in real life or you're staying home? Uh, well, you life? know, I just really, so I was scared. I was scared. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I what about the vaccine? Are you an anti-vaxxer or are you going to No, I'm vaccinated. Oh, and you're still scared. I'm fully vaxxed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> still scared. <laughs> I was the Johnson & Johnson. That's the only one I know black people probably back to all kinds of Because that sounds like what I can trust. It's Johnson & Johnson like, okay, I'll get that one. Yeah. I guarantee that more people, black people got the Johnson & Johnson vaccination than any other. Right. You know, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Because that's, that's the one I wanted. And then they, then they, yeah, they banned it for a while because people were getting blood clots. So now I, know, I don't I know. know what to do. Yeah. yeah. I've been having a real bad headache in this side of my brain, but I, I've been okay. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, I was kind of worried, but what can you do? It's been a while yeah. now. It's been, it was almost two months for me, so. You're fine. Yeah. But you're still scared. Yeah, you're of course. Scared. I wasn't even going to get it. It was so new, you know? Yeah. I usually like to wait till they get the bugs out of stuff. Hell, I don't even get a new iPhone when it comes out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I usually wait on that, you know? But I, I didn't like, get well, the... I didn't get the Johnson and Johnson because I figured if they can't make talcum powder, I don't trust them. Yeah. <laughs> and I got the lazy man vax. I only wanted to go once. So I was like, that's it. You know, I don't know. Get, it, get it once, get it done, in and out. I'm done. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, I'm feeling good about it. I mean, I, I don't, I still don't feel any more confident. I still don't go in crowded places. I still wear my mask. I'm a mask. Yeah. You know? I still keep people six feet away from me and shit. When they get too close, you give them that look, you know. <laughs> I still do that to a certain extent. But yeah, but I did go to a I did do a show at the haha -Ha Jack show um this last week, and I did the uh muddle and twist show. Those were two outside shows. Oh nice. And those were really cool. I didn't wear them. I mean I wore a mask when I wasn't on stage. But man, just being out, being I, I want to take it off and leave it off. I swear. It's a great feeling. Yeah. You know, just and, uh, being I'm denial. Just, and, uh, if, I if you're outside, you can take your mask off. You're vaccinated. <laughs> so I might. Yeah. <laughs> I might. Well, but, maybe yeah. it'll be okay soon. The numbers keep going down and down. So uh maybe yeah, and, I, and I and I'm yeah. getting there envious of my friends that are doing live shows. They, they, it's, that's that's starting to get to me. Because I feel like I'm falling behind if I don't get back out, up, out on the trail. You yeah, know? that's kind of my fear is like the world will secretly open up, like not legally, but just one by one. People will start yeah. going out there and I won't get the memo and I'll just still be home hiding out and uh, yeah. miss out on everything. Because people out but, there making connections, they do it all. Yeah, you stuff. walk outside, there's traffic everywhere. People are not staying home. They only stayed home for like two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. But by then your hair wig is going to be like three quarters done. So you'll have made progress. The, oh yeah by then <laughs> anyway but yeah it's fun it's fun being out with people it's different you know I, I mean I've had my bubble of all the family members and in-laws and all that stuff but it's fun hanging out with strangers yeah you know? yep. I went to that party with Mr. C everybody looks good you know people yeah. stylish and uh you know, dressed you up. It's, it's fun so yeah. All right. So Were I you think holding we your talk, breath when people talk? We talk to everyone. People switch places on my phone a little bit, but I think I got no, to I, I, I asked you, were you, did you hold your breath when people talk to you? No, I'm not scared of COVID because <laughs> I already had it. There was one yeah, thing so she's a carrier. in the whole place. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and I, always, yeah. I was always a germaphobe anyway, so like I never touch elevator buttons or toilet handles or doorknobs or any of that stuff ever you know so I was always kind of germaphobic but now I'm a little less emotionally freaked out by the fear of touching things you know <laughs> so I mean, that's how my wife and daughter were they, they're kind of like that always making me wash my hands when I come out the bathroom yeah, well, we start thinking like, oh, this hand was on yeah. this, and then it was on that, yeah. and I touched that, and so I'm basically touching that. You know, like, Sometimes I do the little finger touch thing. <laughs> yeah, the skin. Sometimes I just, I just turn the water on and wash my head. <laughs> just stand there. Well, they can hear it, you know. <laughs> So it's like, like, we have all these diseases then because you never washed your hands. 
I just care. I watch them all the time now. <laughs> well, good, good man. Started some good habits for you then. So yeah, yeah. Good habits. That's for sure. Yeah, I got like the knee I use for pushing buttons or the elbow. And I got all kinds of tricks for pushing buttons on things I don't want to touch. But uh, anyway, but then they do some backwards things. I don't know. I might have talked about this last week. No, I was talking about this with somebody at the party. I belong to Bank of America. As soon as COVID hit, they shut down half their branches. So now everybody's crowded into fewer branches. Then they have like four double doors. They close them all and they just have one little door open. So everybody's going through the same little door and there's a security guy that sits there and breathes in your face as you pass him like two feet away. And I'm like, this doesn't make sense. It was better before. And now there's lines out the door People are so bored, they can't go to bars. They're just hanging out in banks and grocery stores and stuff. Like the lines are longer than they've ever been. I, I don't know. Because everyone has to be six feet apart. So that makes the lines longer, right? Part of it. And part of it, I think <laughs> they people only are so, many so people bored, in. they're going to the bank. I don't and know. And if you go into a bank in the hood, they only have one teller. Okay, got <laughs> you got 175 people in line, you got one teller. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah like, it's like going to the club in the old days. You see all the lines all the way around the block. I don't know if I'm going to go there. But yeah, now you have to drive by the bank and see how long the line is before you decide whether to go. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. All right, Mr. C, anything going on? Any announcements with you? Um, no, I think it's pretty good. We just, we're working on a feature film that we're going to be getting done called Ancient Chinese Secret, which is going to be a skip bag special. Neil's working on, so I'm starring in that. Um, oh, no, cool. that's about it. Oh, that's nothing much, no, nothing much. Oh, I'm starring in a movie about oh, ooh, ooh, okay. Yeah, I think I'm oh, starring, yeah, starring in a Chinese movie, Mr. C. You're not Chinese. Yeah, well, no, it's called Ancient Chinese Secret, but it, it's about two battling Chinese stores, but it's like this white guy trying to bang this hot Asian chick and earn her father's respect. And it spins oh, into a, a, whole, a wild you're story. You're not a white guy? You're not an Asian chick? Oh, I'm one of the kids. I'm one of the kids. I'm one of the cops that's involved in, in, in oh, part okay. of the the, 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 okay. the the climax of the story. All right. Well, yeah. Oh, but cool. there's something real. Uh, I should mention it every time for a while. Um, on Netflix, check out Cross, Rise of the Villains. Uh, I am in that at 13 minutes, 18 minutes, and 58 minutes. So if you got Netflix, you want to see like the Expendables C-level version. And it's got like Lou Ferrigno and Brian Austin Green and, and, and Danny Trejo and everybody in it. Check that out. Get high as shit and laugh at how great and, and, and good and, and fun this movie is. So Can we cross just right the a screen share of that right now? And Mr. Yeah. C is hobnobbing with the rich and famous. When we went to that party, everybody's driving a, uh, I forgot the name of the car, Rolls Royce. Yeah. yeah. And right. there was a nice Rolls Royce convertible that some guy that stuck his hand in it, I guess it was his friends, and he stuck his hand in it, and the the alarm started going off because they're very sensitive they don't want you touching it looks all wide open like you could just reach in and start feeling the leather but you can't you know so uh anyway but mr <laughs> he's, uh, he's working it in hollywood he's moving up the chain up the so, chain. Uh, so i've got a hollywood paycheck look at the background <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right Let's get this. Let's get this show started. Anybody volunteering to go first? Who wants to go first? I will. Daryl. Daryl. K Mac, not K Mac. K Mac. No, that's K Mac. K Mac. Y'all throwing on my flow. I had balanced that out comedians in organized fashion. See, this is what happens. You know, comedians they be values and whatnot. Y'all messing up my order. So oh well, no. Go in whatever order you have. That's cool. I can tell you. No, no, you good. You good. You good. I th- how we re coordinate a- as you perform. That's how we're going to do that. So, that's time to start the Dive Bar Comedy Show. I'm Carl Anthony, Mr. CD Enforcer, aka Poppy Paul the Bad Boy, Skit Bags, representing, you know what I'm saying? Always out here in the city, uh, representing. Check out my artist also, Mr. KK. He got some nice music with girls with big titties in it. So, KK music, check him out. And it's about to be on. You guys ready to get this Dive Bar Comedy Show started? Can I get a yeah? Oh. yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. So it's the Dabar Comedy Show, and the first gentleman coming to the stage is actually one of our family favorites. He is one of the Soul Brother Number One, the Soul Brother Number One. 
So you better get ready because we just got somebody locked up for doing crazy stuff to brothers. So it's only right that a brother jumped this off to celebrate it. Are you guys ready to get your hearts a flutter? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. 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 That's right. Let me get a clap, 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 clap. Make it, 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 make Thanks for everyone that came out tonight. Thanks for all the comments that went before me. You guys have some real interesting stories. Kenny, you cracked me up. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't get over that. I'm not going to include that into my set, even though I should, because that's some funny shit. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to move on, man. Pandemic, man. I'm so glad that we're getting, starting to get out of that shit. I was, like I said, I was scared of COVID. Scared, 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 <laughs> man. You know, I don't want to be around anybody. If you if you called me on the phone and you started coughing, I was hanging up. <laughs> I was hanging up. I was scared of COVID, man. I said I check all the boxes. You know, with being home, man, that's that long, man. It's like, you know, you develop all kind of weird, you start doing weird shit to yourself. <laughs> you know, you're home by yourself. I mean, what else are you gonna do? <laughs> Find some weird shit to do to your body. So <laughs> For me personally, I shaved all the hair off my feet. <laughs> <laughs> now I know some of you all may look like duh because you probably been doing that shit all the time, right? Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a youthful thing. I would, I'm not from. I'm old school guy, as you can see from the gray hair, the salt right. pepper in my hair. I, I got, I got seasoning. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm back in the day, man, when hair was good. That's you right. Know? Bring back the bush, baby. That's right, man. You wanted girls with hair. The more hair they had, the better. What do you think about that, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the more hair they had, the better. You didn't want it, man, unless she had like a gorilla or Sasquatch down there between her legs, right? You want <laughs> Carol's nodding her head. Yeah, you want to see hair all the way down to the ankle and shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I did that. I, I did it. I shaved everything off and I look really strange. Mm -mm -mm. I did look just like a baby <laughs> <laughs> with a really big penis. <laughs> but, but my other wife liked it, you know, she liked it. So now we play this game, uh, you know, called Big Dick Baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we're doing that, man. <laughs> I know. I mean, where can I go from there? Right? <laughs> it's not going to get any worse. That's probably as bad as it gets as far as on the personal penis jokes. I don't have a lot of the penis jokes. I used to. When I first started, I had all these because my granddaddy. My, my granddaddy had this huge penis. And you wonder why how I knew this. <laughs> I'll tell you how I knew it. Right? So I happened to go over his house one day and he told me that he needed to go to the doctor. This is a true story. I'm not making this shit up. He said he needs to go to the doctor because he had he was 93 at the time. And he lived to be 100, that's what he was. Uh, he had to go to the doctor because he had uh, prostate cancer, right? Mm. And he mm. said he, he was getting these white rings on his penis from the medicine that he was taking. And he said he was only getting, a, he said not all of it, he said only, only about this much of it. Right. <laughs> and so he said, he, he, he said, then he called me. He called me. He said, Hey, Daryl, I got you need to take me to the doctor. I said, Okay. I, he said, I got to go to the doctor right now. And he showed it to me. <laughs> I was shocked. I swear, it looked like he had a raccoon hanging from his nose. <laughs> I didn't know to take him to the doctor to the vet, right? <laughs> I, and I am serious. He had he had girlfriends. He had all of that. He was going through. He has taken all of Vigus Ellis cocktails and shit all the way to the end. But yeah, he, my grandfather. Fortunately, uh, apples don't fall too far from the tree. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of why I even told that story to kind of show you how I got to where it is with this whole big mm -hmm. All right. That's bad. <laughs> That's bad. I won't be doing that at the comedy chateau. Uh, <laughs> just so you know, this is just kind of off the cuff. But yeah, man. Uh, but I had some stuff, man. I had been working on. Hold on, I'm sorry. 
since we can do this here, I'm I'm sure the paying customers won't mind. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, man, the the craziness that's going on, man, socially, you know, with the whole George Floyd thing and the white supremacists and and all of that shit, man. You know, it, it, it's crazy. You know, uh, white guilt right now is at all time high. You know, I, I'll I'll grant it that. You know, and a lot of black people taking advantage of all of this. You know, I have to admit, I've kind of taken a little advantage myself. I uh, been, yeah, I haven't been to work on time since the George Floyd video came out. <laughs> I know that's wrong to say. God bless him, and it has nothing to do with him, but you know, I, I have somewhat of an opportunist. You know? Yeah, that's all right. They're buying $3 million houses with George Floyd money. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's like, hey, you know, I can get away with shit at work. Anybody say nothing to me. I just give them that hurt, you know, angry <laughs> black man. <laughs> it works. It works. But hey, you know, I've been through it when the good times and the bad, you know, with all of that. But you know, I, I'm glad that they're uh, getting rid of, the, rid of the, all the racist symbols and the icons and all of that stuff, right? Uh, you know, that's 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 progress. You know, all we're going to be left now is just with uh, just the real racism. <laughs> but what I can't understand is, to me, that we're getting rid of all of that. How is how is the most racist symbol in America still allowed to exist? I'm talking about <laughs> Colonel Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> now you tell me, you have a wife. Southern Confederate plantation owner, Colonel, selling fried chicken. It's kind of racist, but it's okay. Because, <laughs> you know, that chicken is good. <laughs> and we like that chicken. I'll speak, for, I'll speak for most black people. We like that chicken. So he'll be around as long as it still tastes good. So anyway, uh, thank you all. Try some uh, Colonel chicken. If you never had it, Kentucky fried, it's good. I'm out. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Daryl That's what I'm talking about. I like that ending clothes and make you think. Yo, it even took me back to me because when I was a little kid, you know, when you're a kid, you think something's great. I used to like Ronald Reagan when I was 10 years old. Then I grew up and found that bad idea. Um, <laughs> I used to like I used to like, I think Colonel Sanders. I was like, oh, he's just a smooth Southern gentleman. And went down. I didn't realize that he was just like, Bessie, get back there and make that goddamn fried chicken so I can steal it and make a business. Didn't know that, right? And the most worst one, right? I used to love Liberace because I thought he was a fucking pimp. <laughs> I'm like, Liberace got bitches. I know Liberace got bitches. And then I grew up and I found out. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I found out. <laughs> I, Yo, he was so bottle, I like the Liberace Liber myself. Liber I thought he was cool. Liberace. Man. Yo, round of applause for Liberace. Hell yeah, I wanted a suit like that. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, he was a pimp. He ain't know it. He just picked the wrong hole. <laughs> <laughs> so for another round of applause for Dow K, man. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Right, 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 right. So we're going to keep it balanced. We're going to go up down. So you got the next gentleman coming to stage, another family favorite. He's Mr. Cool. He has been engaged for at least 17 years because it just keeps getting pushed back. For some reason, I think God hates him. He'll figure it out later. But this guy right here is super cool and super smooth. And his name smells as sweet as what they call a rose. Are you guys ready for the next comedian? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. yeah, that's right, that's right. Now back on the block, they call him Mr. Badman Benny, but here we call him clap, 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 clap. Ben, the man, Rosie. Uh, I've done this show several times. This is the first time someone didn't say, you know, I think a very Jewish looking fellow was about to perform. <laughs> Had a whole follow up burn prepared and everything, but alas, uh -huh. I'll have to save it for next time. So yeah, quarantine. Um, it's been going on so long that I've been at home that my feet actually went up a full shoe size. <laughs> I'm now a woman six. 
<laughs> if this keeps up, I'm gonna have to buy all new heels. It's terrible. People are getting really nervous about going back into the real world, which I get. So to make things easier, whenever I have lunch with someone, I put a little mirror right here on the side of my head so they can watch themselves the entire time. Just like on Zoom. <laughs> I have OCD. I'm afraid of germs. As far as I'm concerned, this pandemic is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Everyone's using hand sanitizer all the time. It's fantastic. I've never felt like a more normal member of society. <laughs> like I used to hide a bottle of Purell in my jacket like it was a flask. <laughs> now I'm just mainlining it like it's heroin, no shame. Never been better. <laughs> All these experts claim that wiping everything down is unnecessary and they call it hygiene theater. You guys heard this term before? Mm. Nope. All right. Well, if you read, you know, news articles I read, you would have heard it. So that's on <laughs> you. Just putting it out there. Um, but I, I think what they don't realize is just how great that term sounds. Like, can you imagine if there was a theater where all people did was perform acts of hygiene? <laughs> Two girls, one cup of Purell. <laughs> Better call Lysol. The Rocky Horror Clorox show. I think if the Arclight had done this, they'd still be around. <laughs> Just uh, putting it out there. Uh, so yeah, I got my first COVID vaccine. I'm now half man, half Fauci. <laughs> right? I'm happy that I got the vaccine, but I'm upset that I got it at CVS. Because when Dr. <laughs> announced that he was extending eligibility, he said you could get it at lots of other places, like vets' offices. <laughs> so I called Studio City Animal Hospital and asked if they had the COVID vaccine, and they're like, this is a vet's office. <laughs> and I'm like, I know, but the government said they're doing vaccines at vet offices. And they're like, we take care of dogs, and they hung up on me. <laughs> So now I need a new vet, if anyone knows anyone. So yeah, I recently got engaged. It only took 11 years, not 17. Thank you very much. Uh, My fiance said that we couldn't get engaged until I became a working writer or I proposed to her with a yellow lab puppy from a breeder in Sacramento that she found on Instagram. Uh, so now we have a yellow lab puppy from a breeder in Sacramento that she found on Instagram. Yeah. Seemed like the easier way to go. <laughs> I originally didn't want a puppy, but now she's my best friend. Like the other day, I told her, if you were on LinkedIn, I'd endorse you for retrieving. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much I like her. I make a fake profile on a job networking website, even though no one's hiring right now. <laughs> Called dedication. <laughs> My fiance is a lot more successful than me. She gets up every morning at 6 a.m. I have to set alarms. So I don't sleep past 10. <laughs> She's verified on Twitter. I can't even remember my password. Oh. <clears throat> She's the vice president of a TV network. I qualify for food stamps. Uh... If there is a rom com about her, I'd be the guy in the beginning that she breaks up with. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 uh. My fiance is Jewish. A lot of people don't realize she's Jewish because she has blonde hair, blue eyes, and is bad with money. <laughs> Being Jewish is weird because we're the only group that can't recognize other people in the same group. Like, you know, <laughs> black guy, go to another black guy and be like, wait, you're black? You're also <laughs> black? <laughs> but with Jews, that literally happens all the time. Like the other day I saw this guy and I was like, hmm, he's reading a book and he's awkward looking, but he's got a tattoo, so could be Armenian. <laughs> Genocide too. My fiance's parents are really rich. One time I was at their house and I clogged the toilet and they're like, we'll just get a new one. 
<laughs> you know how much money you have to have to be no plunger rich? <laughs> now when I go to someone's house and I see a plunger, I'm like, they're not doing well. Uh... Definitely not in the top 0.1%. All right, that's my time. I'm Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Another round of applause for Ben Rosen. Masquerading as Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. More great dive bar comedy, getting us in the mood. So let's keep it going and keep it spinning. So I had a whole bunch of penises here, so I figured I'd sandwich the lady right in the middle because they can all just pick a hole on either side. You guys are up here. That's right. That's right. So I'm going to bring my lady. She is from across the pond and she's got hair like her parents spent a little bit of time in Africa and her daddy just lied to her about what he did. Her hair is so curly and beautiful. It is fresh. It is frizzy. And it is fluorescent. And it is flowing. If you love curly hair, can I get a ski wee? <laughs> that's right that's right we love curly hair people and this lady right here is super talented super skilled she can crochet and smoke cigarettes simultaneously and that is a talent that god needs to give money for so can i get a clap 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 clap, 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 clap for caroline the love langford thank you for such a lovely introduction you make me feel a lot better because this hair, look at it. I feel like I'm, I, I look insane, even though I probably am anyway. So, But uh, this is the result of being home for 14 months and going nowhere near a hairdresser. Uh, so I just kind of chop it off myself. So uh, maybe by the end of this, I'll have a new skill. Anyway, so I mean, I've been here with the dogs. And I love my dogs. I absolutely adore my dogs. I've always had dogs. And um, someone asked me recently, have I ever been bitten? And I said, actually, I have once. And it was, a, it really was an awful bite. I mean, deep blood everywhere. And I got a bit worried because, you know, once they taste blood, uh, they could bite again. So my husband and I, actually, we were thinking we might have to put her down. But that didn't happen, I'm happy to say, because I went up and I went very, very close. And I said, you will not bite me again. And reluctantly, my daughter said, OK, mum, fine. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. When she was little. She said to me, I think you love the dogs more than me. And I said, oh God, I hate those questions. I said, but you're right, I do. I do love the dogs more than you because they don't answer me back. They don't care if I don't take a shower and they lick my feet, which I love. <laughs> All three things you can't do. So I rest my case. <laughs> She's all grown up now, so there's no chance of her licking my feet, even if I want her to. But I've got the dogs for that. Anyway, I'm a grandmother now, and you can see the enthusiasm pouring out of me. <laughs> well, you see, because I've, I've looked at them. And let me just say this, the backside of a cow with hemorrhoids is better looking than the pair of those grandchildren of mine. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I said to my son, you better do a DNA test immediately because they're obviously not yours. We don't do ugly in our family, okay? Oh. And they're moany and whiny. I mean, I said with looks like that, they should at least have a nice personality, but they don't. <laughs> I had to babysit once. Oh God. And, and the, the little the, the older one, she's moaning, whining, I'm hungry. 
And I'm saying, stop being such a narcissist. It's not all about you. <laughs> and besides, you're seven now. Isn't it time you start developing an eating disorder so you can fit in in school? <laughs> you should start smoking. It's good. It curbs the appetite. <laughs> And the baby starts crying and, and she, she tells me the little brother's hungry and I, I see it in the bag, there's bottles of formula and I am totally, totally against that. I mean, it's so unnatural. So I, I gave him a bottle of whiskey instead. Uh. He loved that. He slept like a baby afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I was never asked to babysit again. I'm happy to say. <laughs> oh, God. And then I had to meet my uh, daughter's new boyfriend. Now I'm putting on my glasses to see. Is that? I've got one minute. Boy, that was quick. All right. So I had to meet my uh, daughter's new boyfriend, who happened to be German. And she said, Mum, please, please don't say anything. And, and I said, look, I'll, you know me, I'll be fine. And I was, I was we, we were getting on really well and small talk. And I asked him his, his sign, his horoscope sign. And he said, Taurus. And I said, well, so was Hitler. <laughs> um, but, you know, it was fine. It was going fine. I just wish I hadn't have said, I hadn't have asked him how he felt like about that his family had killed six million of mine. Kind of put a damper on the evening, but otherwise it was fine. Anyway, well, that's it for me. Um, I'm not out of here. I'm still here. I'll be here in 14 months from now. So <laughs> be safe, everyone. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, everybody. No applause for Caroline Knight for... Yeah, that's right. That's right. She ain't dropping no poppycock. That's what I'm talking about. So that's good stuff. Good stuff. More quality stuff. And I like how to end. She closed it because people who don't do comedy and entertain, you know, a minute, five minutes, seven minutes, six minutes, it can seem like forever. But when you're doing something that you love, it always feels like it goes like that. So remember to appreciate uh, the things that you love. Trust me. And I felt bad. I felt like I had to explain. I was going to be like, well, you know, I had a real stressful week at work at the dive bar show. I'm not feeling really good. So if it was really quick, it's, it's, I'm still having a bad day. <laughs> so there you go. So dive bar comedy excuses. Drunk men. That's right. That's right. Can't satisfy your lady. It's the job's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Mansplaining. It's great, isn't it? Ah, oh, God. We can talk wildly than anything. It's like, oh, God. Ah. That's a stressful week at work. I don't have to pay attention to the Bible a day. All right. So good, good, good. So another round of applause for our love from across the pond who made it here to show us more love. Caroline Eichberg. <laughs> All righty, right, right, right. So now we're going to get it back to Mr. Firecracker himself. This man actually has a podcast out that you need to go check out called Band girl and that's because he is one of two men that i've known in 15 years of la of doing comedy that are constantly banned from clubs on a regular basis one is the gentleman who helped create this show mr gt and the other is this man right here and he's continuing the legacy of getting banned which is true comedy can i get a oh yeah for getting banned Oh, yeah. 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 Right. You got them right. That's true. County and whatnot. So, everybody, pull your dick out. Okay. Never mind. Wait. Don't do it. Don't do it. You might get fucked up. We don't want to get banned from Facebook. I got carried away. I got carried away. <laughs> you guys ready for this next comedian? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. yeah. Right, He's actually one of the kings of the jungle. So, I need you guys to roar for me. Or one, two, three. Can I get a lion roar? One, two, three. Right. Yeah. That's why you get a clap, 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 cl
Hello, hello, everyone. You're good now. Okay, sorry, everyone. That's taken out of my time. You can take that out of my time. Um, I'm right here, guys. Thank you so much for inviting me back to Dive Bar. We're here, out here in Los Angeles, keeping the motherfucking Dive Bar energy alive, getting naked, getting kicked out, not paying for the beers, not paying for the one minimum uh, item, and I'm not paying for $5 for five minutes. So... You know that I I stay to that. It's a, it's important. Uh, pretty much, be out here in the open mic scene because if you're not out there, it, it it's it's getting real violent. You know, people are getting violent out here. Last time I checked, it was a a fight that broke out at an open mic because everybody was uh doing the same joke, the same COVID joke. It, it's just like people are stealing everybody's jokes, so. I'm just showing up just to, you know, get my UFC on, if you know what I'm saying. And uh, <laughs> I, I've been really happy, but this COVID <clears throat> thing has made my mind uh, a little fuzzy. I sell weed and I was riding my bike late at night selling weed. And I had just pulled up to this uh, smoke shop on Hollywood Boulevard this person that I honestly thought was a hot Kim Kardashian looking chick came up to me and asked me, Hey, do you have cigarettes? And I said, yeah, I do. So I went ahead and started talking to her and getting to know her <laughs> felt that I had a shot to hook up with her. So I followed her to her hotel and little did I know she uh, started pulling out uh, a crack pipe and a crack rock and i'm like oh so you like to smoke crack huh before you like to suck dick or something like that right and i i just started fucking hanging out and you know not minding anything that was going on but when i took off this this woman's clothes i realized that the torso was just too too bulky you know the the, the torso of a woman Usually it's slim, slender, or soft. It doesn't feel firm and, and solid, you know? Ah. And uh, I, I was just like, you know what, man? Might as well experiment while I'm here. So <laughs> this, this guy had a, a beautiful tit job. I mean, I, I've been with a lot of women, but the tits on this guy were so sexy. I, I just immediately started licking on them. And subconsciously, I knew I was licking a man's chest. So it was all fucked up. And I was asking this guy, hey, can you please uh, let me come on your face? And he was like, no, I don't, I don't do that. I, I'm not OK with that. Well, it's like, come on, you want to be a woman. You got to have the whole experience. It's not fair for you to be, you know, holding back on, on the whole game of what it is. It's just fucking crazy. I had a really fun time with a guy who has a beautiful female figure, but that doesn't mean I'm gay. I don't think I'm gay and I'm positive that I'm not gay because I just, I don't like males, but I'm just in love with tits is what I found out through this whole pandemic is I'm a tits guy and I don't care what they're on. Could be a, a cow, could be a fucking a dog. Got a nice pair of tits. I'm looking them. <laughs> Yeah, also caught syphilis, <laughs> not because of that, but because of another situation. I caught syphilis uh, during the pandemic, and um, it made my dick look like Freddy Krueger, like just <laughs> huge gashes on the on the base on the and just the amount of pain that I would go through every day, you know, because honestly, 
I'm addicted to masturbation. I, I, I just, I can't get enough of it. I wake up late at night, just eager to look at some porn. And that didn't stop me. You know, the, 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 the cuts on my dick did not stop me from jacking off. I was making things worse. The cuts were getting longer and deeper. The more I would play around and <laughs> I ran to the sex clinic. I was running in there and they're like, Kenny, you cannot run in here just trying to show us your dick, okay? That's not yeah. the way things work, okay? They uh, you by name. I told them, no, really, this time it's for real, okay? This time I'm not playing around, and <laughs> I don't care if it's a guy who looks at it, okay? Just look at it, someone. Uh, they examined my, my penis, and they pulled out, like, a children's picture book, and this guy flipped the pages and was, like, looked at, showed me this picture of a burnt penis, looked like it was dipped in acid. And he told me, does this look familiar to you? And it said syphilis on the bottom of the picture. I was like, oh my God, is that how I'm gonna die? Is this how I'm going to die? I don't wanna die. And the doctor said, well, we're all going to die. So but then what, a, what a shitty thing to say, you know? Like obviously <laughs> see, my dick is in terrible shape and I need some encouragement, man. You can't just tell me I'm gonna die. After I asked you, is this how I'm gonna die? I don't know what disease I just caught, man. What the fuck? It, it, it was insane. But he gave me some ointment. I started putting the ointment twice a week, uh, once in the morning, another in the evening. And luckily it's been coming, it's been recovering. The skin is coming back. Sometimes it gets a little ashy. I don't know why, never had that issue, but suddenly now it's starting to get ashy. And, uh, I just have to use a lot of lotion, which is good. You know, it makes my skin feel good and it makes it glow. Still though, my life has never been the same since. So my life has definitely changed in more ways than, than one during this COVID. I've realized that uh, it's, it's, it's hard for me to uh, tell people that I'm not Asian, especially because I teach kids martial arts at a park. And uh, these, these kids suddenly lose all respect for me when I tell them that I'm Guatemalan. They're like, wait, you're not Chinese? You're not Japanese? Why, what am I learning? Who are you? What are you doing? <laughs> it's, like, what the <laughs> it's fucked up, man. These kids don't even know how to do jumping jacks, bro. And it's like the, the youth, Kenny Lyon has to save the youth. That's how fucked up the world is, okay? In the daytime, I'm helping the kids, and at the nighttime, I'm trying to find what's a woman and what's not. Okay, it's just all over the place. But thank you so much, Dive Bar. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. I'll be back. Listen to my podcast. Have a good night. Yeah, for Kenny. Uh... <laughs> 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 when you run into the sex clinic and they know you by first name. That's what it's all about. I can't what are you doing here? <laughs> mm -hmm. about that for 20 minutes. That is outstanding. And that's the Kenny line. So you got one more community coming up. Let's go right into it because we got him up early this time. But luckily for him, COVID is getting worse where he's at. So he ain't working. So life is good. That's next gentleman is <laughs> super talented and he's doing all kind of cool. Once again, one more round of applause for Kenny Lyle. Woo That's right. So we got our God less for last. Let's say for last because it's technically the morning where he at. So I figure he's up for the rest of the day. Me, I'm getting drunk and passing out after this. That's how it goes down in the hood. And this guy is super talented. He's gonna put us on the game. Now, being that he knows what's going down, he's gonna educate us on a whole nother level of comedic stuff. So are you guys ready to hear the best comedian in India? <laughs> That's right. Once again, the best comedian in India. Can I get a yeah? Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. Now, recently, because it was spring, my Indian brothers did work at Legal Zoom with me. They celebrate a, a holiday called Holi, which is like their spring holiday where they throw a lot of colors, they wear a lot of white. So when you guys get a chance, take some acid, get some paint, celebrate Holi, and get somebody pregnant. Okay. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So can I get a clap, 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 clap when the committee comes to stage? Yay. 
That's right, that's right. So this man's name is real cool because his name is coincidentally simultaneous with a great talent, Mr. Shaggy, that says it wasn't me. And this guy right here is Mr. Shaggy. Dora. Chicken wrap, chicken wrap. Got Trust me or not, guys, you know, <laughs> my neighborhood has a lot of, uh, huh. lot of mm -hmm. you know. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> can, you guess, can you guys hear me right? There you go. Yeah, it's okay now. I have to be market driven, you know, I have to like get down to the source, uh, my, my single sourcing, multi sourcing, whatever. But uh, let's talk about uh, Indian spirituality. Uh, you know, according to the ancient Indian spiritual text, the epitome of Indian spirituality, they say that human semen itself is God. Human semen itself is God. I don't go to temple, but I see God every night. <laughs> That's all it takes, guys, you know. We, got, we need some fingers. And we need to like get it down and see God. We have to show God to us. Can we all do some activity and show the God inside us to the people outside us? Who likes to show his or her God? Come on. Right now. <laughs> show your God. Men, 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 can, men can show only one God, but women can show multiple gods. Uh, yeah. Anyway, you know, um, spirituality and whatever, it's all marketing term. Don't don't fall for it. Uh, but uh, that, that's firm, right? Uh, that that creative force. If, 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 if you know how to contain it in your head, you become more creative. You become more vigilant. You become more virile. That's what they say in theory. In fact, there is a uh, yoga asana for that. So you need to like stand upside down. When you stand upside down, the sexual energy from your organ will move down to your head, but so that it stays in your head and you don't feel the craving at all. It's like controlling your sensations. Mm. So this American couple, they wanted to like experiment it. They, they, they need to see if that's true or not. So they did this yoga posture, stood upside down, and they felt like their sexual energy was getting transported from uh, their sexual organ to their brain. They stood in that position for five minutes and they felt like, wow, now I can control my sexual energy. In the next five minutes, they started having sex. <laughs> the next five minutes, they felt like their sexual energy got back from their head to the, uh, the sexual organ. So it's all imagination. <laughs> Well, imagination you know there was this yogi once you know he felt so uh, uh, uh like um what what is that uh, word egoistic he felt he, he got a lot of ego he felt like i'm the master i i can control all my sensations and all that uh so this american uh, scientist folks called him okay you really can control all your sensations come here i just want to put some sensors on your body and then like test whether you can really control your sensation so he was called he was, uh, he, he was in the lab, like, like a lab rat. A hot white girl sat on his uh, uh, lap. He didn't feel nothing. And then a voluptuous black girl sat on his other lap. He didn't feel nothing. No sensation, he could able to control it. They tried everything. At the end, they turned on the Wi-Fi. He got a boner. That's all it takes. And then someone showed him an iPhone. He started coming. He started coming. Tension, guys. You know, it's all about the tension. We gotta like control our karmic tension, evolutionary tension. Feel feel that positivity. So this one one time, this guy came to a yogi and asked him, "Hey, hey, yogi, how do I control my my negativity? All you need to do is you have to let your tension down. But how do I do it?" You got to reduce your tension. But how do I do it? Okay, let me tell you how to do it. You got to close your eyes 
and say it after me. Ten shen, nine shen, eight shen, seven shen, six shen, and then keep on going. Keep on going until you hit the rock bottom. So this yogi guy asked him, hey, where are you right now? I'm in minus uh, a 1,50,222. Oh, you went that far. Okay, maybe I cannot fix your problem. You need to go to some artificial intelligence and neuroscience guy. Maybe they can fix you. They're gonna fix you. I'm not, I'm not the one, I'm theory. Whatever, all right, let's talk about urine yoga. Uh, back in the days, uh, this uh, uh, ancient yogis used to drink urine. It's a de-stressor. That's what they've been drinking back in the days. And then British came in and then they told, hey guys, why, why are you drinking urine? Come on, have some beer. And then they tasted it. They stopped drinking urine. The urine yoga became beer yoga long back before Americans invented it, whatever. I'll tell you what, in the future, if your IQ is below 85, you're urine yoga. <laughs> if your IQ is below 85, you need to drink your own urine because Technology is going to take all our jobs. <laughs> and what are we going to do? We are left with our own urine and feces, guys. <laughs> all right, sometimes I have to like deep fake, deep fake LA, whatever, <laughs> just for the next few minutes. Yeah, they say like desire is the root cause of all evil. Desire is the root cause of all evil. But what about the desire of having that desire? I have a desire. That desire is to not have any desire. Life is a cycle. We got a cycle. <laughs> you know, we, India gave uh, the, the breathing technique to the, the whole world, but look at, look at it now. They're searching for oxygen cylinders. <laughs> All right, uh, some Gen Z, some Gen Z uh, like reference. Come on, Madison. Chicken wrap, mountain wrap, map. It's not Indian home. It's not uh, African home. It's not about China, but it's about it's it's Google Home, guys. At the end of the day, <laughs> uh, maybe uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, if someone is getting naked in the stage, if someone is getting naked in the stage. It could be Buddhism. It could be Buddhism. What's the foundation? Nirvana. It's called Nirvana. You don't need to. You don't. You don't need to pop all your uh, pills. <laughs> Viagra. All you need to do is contract your asshole and release it for like a few. Minutes. So you get a good. <laughs> from the money, yeah. but it's all mystical science. You know, you better be the judge. Mm. You, you be the lab rat of your own experiment and uh, whatever. Yeah, let's party, guys! Come on, party time! Woo! <laughs> Thank you so much. Woo! Woo! Yeah, you. Yeah, that's right. Another round of applause for Shaggy Garage. Mm -hmm. And all of our comedians who came to say, round of applause for all our comedians who came to the stage. And now we can dive for our comedy show clothes and whatnot. I'm going to do a quick freestyle rap. I figure we got a lot of dicks in here. I need to do some masculine stuff. So I'm going to do a quick rap. I'm going to mm. do some of the names. And then Wild Joe's going to take us home where we need to go. So let's get into it. <clears throat> good one. What's a good one? <clears throat> oh. From Earth to space, I murk this case. <laughs> Agility, I get real with the. I kill a flea rapper, but spitting, ripping in the flea slapper. I cut you down by the knee stature. Knuckles call me ramen G catcher. Cause I'm out there looking for every brother tripping. Got my kitties and my cousins steady on a dipping. Mama, baby, daddy flipping. Where my money flicking? Want some shoes instead of chicken? Yo, the closest finger licking, but the ribs is on the poking. And friends is always joking about his mama coking, about his papa out there on the loking. Yo, the family lot is broken. Yo, TJ got shit to say to me today. Well, not today anyway. Wonder why my mind is on a sway. Lost in the land of better home, where I get a sweater in the cold. Living till I'm super duper old. Raising all them little kitties in my fucking mold. <laughs> I love the stories in the way it's told. That's the Dive Bar Comedy Show. When I paused, everybody came up. 
and all my great comedians who came to the stage. My uh, man, Kenny Lyon. Miss Caroline Langford. Yeah. Betty the Badman Roser. <laughs> Shaggy the Bad Doggy. Yeah. yeah. And Daryl. KK, KK, KK. Tell us where we need to go. Stop them babies from screaming, yo. Wow. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever stop the babies from screaming, but uh, <laughs> if you're watching this now live, you can watch us live every Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Pacific at the Dive Bar Comedy page on Facebook. 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 And, um, Facebook. Yeah. I gotta I be original. Oh, shit, I want to give a girl some of that face dick. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those that they call Freudian slip. You hear a word too much. I used to have to Can you try to just buy some face dick? They said, <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> yeah, they don't do that. I had a hot landlord. I used to pay uh, $1,600. I kept putting every time on the checks accidentally. Instead of 600 it was 600 <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> You can it's check like, wow, out the free, free rent play. for a while. Yeah, it, it was uh, it was fun paying rent. Sometimes I'd go knock on the door and he'd answer in a towel. Uh, you know, to get that. <laughs> oh, the sexual the innuendo, right the the tension and release, <laughs> like Shaggy was talking about. But uh, yeah, so I don't know. Carol is distracting me. She looks like a pirate right now. She's doing pirate. <laughs> So, the people are getting kooky <laughs> late at night. Anyway, check out the replay wherever you listen to podcasts <laughs> on your phone. Just search Dive Bar Comedy, or you can always go to divebarcomedy.com. I think we're up to like 140 <laughs> episodes or something by now. Uh, these comics have all been on before. Search their names, and you will find other funny interviews and funny sets with these talented people. And as soon as we're brave enough, we'll be out in real life, in the dive bars, on a yellow tier, you goofballs. All right. In the park. Oh, you guys the are parking funny. lots. <laughs> at the clubs. And, and just go to Carol's show. If you want to see real life people, just hang out with Carol. She's all about it. <laughs> Carol, are you showing the gallery? Can you see everybody right now? Yes, so I can see everyone. All right, we're all there being very silly. I don't know how you guys did this, but uh, <laughs> it was fun. All right. <laughs> thanks a lot for watching. Tune in next week. And uh, thanks to all our comics for coming on. I'm Wild Joe, Dive Bar Comedy. Woo, Wild Joe. Love you guys. Yeah, see you next time. Yeah.